In section 3.2, we saw how to describe data visually with graphs and charts and tables. In section 3.3, we'll see how to describe a data set using statistics, which will be numbers that describe something about the data set. So I start the section using that data set from the MBA that we used in the last section again, and we'll draw examples from here as we go through the section. Generally speaking, when we're measuring something with statistics, there are two broad categories of the kinds of statistics that will summarize a data set like this. Say, for instance, we look at the age variable, and we want to measure kind of the summary of the age position. There's two general categories of ways that we can summarize that. One basically asks, what is a typical age? What's the center of this variable, this range of numbers we're looking at? And the other is how spread out are they? And so we talk about measures of center and measures of spread. Again, measures of center basically give us a sense of what a typical value in that data set is. So just looking at these numbers, a typical value is going to be somewhere in the 20s and 30s and we can nail that down more specifically when we look at specific measures of center. And it doesn't look like it's too far spread out. They're pretty tightly clustered in the 20s and 30s. Uh, the ages don't range from, say, 15 to 60 or something like that. It's a pretty tight range. So we can look at those two general categories. This is mostly just for us to keep track of what we're looking at and to organize our thought process as we go through the section. Uh, some of the statistics we'll look at are measures of center and others are measures of spread. You can read through the description here in a little more detail, but basically these four measures of center are the ones that we're going to look at in this section and then we'll have two measures of spread. There's a couple other things we'll see at the end of the section but basically these are the statistics we'll look at. So for each one we'll look at how to calculate it how to interpret it, and then if there are interesting types of problems that come up every now and again, we'll see how to do that. We'll have formulas for each of these, but ultimately in practice we're going to use the calculator, and the calculator has a built-in uh, system to find all of these statistics for us. So we'll save ourselves some time and effort. We'll maybe see how to calculate each one with the formula quickly, but then most often we'll just enter the data in the calculator and let it work for us. There's a little note here that um, if you're looking at a population versus a sample, there's one slight distinction when we get to the standard deviation and you can read that in more detail here. So the first one we get to is the average. That's our first statistic. It's probably the most familiar, the most common one. And as you may know, to get the average of a list of numbers, all you do is add up all the numbers you have and then divide by how many there were. So for example, if we're going to find the average salary of the players, you add up all their salaries and then divide by 30 because there are 30 players. Uh, there's some notation here you should pay attention to, but other than that, finding the average is pretty familiar uh, and you shouldn't have too much trouble with that. Then we get to the median, which is another measure of center. Now there's a discussion here that you should read through carefully, but basically it describes why we don't just say the average or the mean is a good enough measure of center, we're done, we don't need anything else. There's a reason we have another measure of center called the median, and the reason is that if there's a set of data like this one here that has some pretty dramatic variation in it, here we have a bunch of players in the 30s and 40s, and then one person uh, with a, a salary of a million dollars. In this case, the average is going to get thrown off by this one dramatically different salary. This outlier is going to affect the mean significantly, and it turns out that that mean, that average, isn't a very good measure of the center or a typical value in this data set. So it turns out that there are cases like this where the median is a better example, a better description of the uh, center or a typical value. And this happens a lot. If you look, for instance, at house prices in a certain area, 
most houses will be in a certain range and then there will be a few houses that are much much more expensive these huge mansions that throw off the mean and so you shouldn't look at the average house price rather the median house price is more significant salaries work the same way in a lot of fields there are a few outliers that skew things and so the median is a better measure generally of the center but having both of them the mean and the median we can compare them and we can learn things like how skewed are things how symmetric are things the median is simply the middle data point if you arrange them in order from smallest to largest it's going to be the number in the middle and if there's an odd number of values it's going to be one of the values in your list will be the middle one if there's an even number there won't be a middle number but there will be two numbers in the middle and so we just take the average of those two and there's an example here that you can follow that goes through just that there's a little bit of a discussion on another way to find the median you can look at this position in your data set if you have n data points if you add one and divide by two you can find out what position you're looking for so for instance say you had seven data points you would take seven plus one divided by two and you would get four and so you would count through to the fourth position and whatever number is sitting at the fourth position would be your median and you can read through again the details on that a little bit more carefully but that's the main idea we can also calculate the mean and the median from a frequency table this is a useful thing if your data is given to you like this you could rewrite all of your data just list it out there's a 20 and another 20 and then there's 421s you can write those down and then 422s you can write those down and then you can go through that list and find the mean and the median the same way we did earlier but there's a little bit of a shortcut that you can read through here and um, find how to find these mean and median faster than writing everything down but if you're ever stuck and you have one of these problems where you have a frequency table you can just write down all of the data points it's just a little more tedious doing that way so there's a shortcut here uh, to calculate the mean you ultimately multiply each value by its frequency and add them up and then divide by the total and the reasoning here is described you can read through that on your own and the median as well you can read through uh, by using this location formula that we saw earlier you can count through and figure out where in this list you're going to run across the median and figure out what the median is by looking at that table so you should go through those because you'll see homework questions and test questions that look just like that so you should go through and make sure that you can follow that process yourself there's also a weighted mean or weighted average and this is especially significant to you as a student if you've got grades in a course and you want to calculate your overall percentage often you have something like this or this given on your syllabus where you have the weight of each assignment either listed as a percentage or as a number of points and really it's the same information either way it's just a different way of writing the same thing and then say for instance you earn a certain score on each assignment at the end of the semester you want to calculate your final grade or you want to calculate what you need on the final exam in order to reach a certain letter grade you can learn how to go through that uh, following these examples to figure out how to calculate the weighted average what's your overall score if a test counts for more than a project for instance you can go through and, and follow that process so make sure you go through these examples carefully watch the video and make sure you can calculate a weighted average uh, you'll see ones like that on the homework and on the test again there's one more uh, measure of center which isn't used quite as often but it's pretty simple it's just the most frequent value you see and that's called the mode there can be more than one mode you could have two or three modes if there are some that are tied for frequency for instance in this problem there are three ages that are tied for most frequent and so there are three modes so the, that brings us to the end of the measures of center the mode isn't quite as interesting or useful as the others but it's one that comes up every now and again for the measures of spread we have two of them we have the range which is the simplest one it's just the distance from the lowest value to the highest value so you just subtract how far the minimum and maximum are from each other and you get the range that's pretty simple to go through and you can see that 
but the range is a pretty basic measure of spread. It's simple, it's easy to calculate, but it doesn't tell you very much. A better measure of, of spread is the standard deviation, which is harder to calculate, but we're going to let our calculator calculate it for us anyway, and it's much more meaningful. So you should read through this carefully, but basically this is the core concept, that when you get a number for the standard deviation, say you get a number of 2, what that means is a typical number in your list is generally about two steps away from the, the center, the mean. So if the standard deviation for the ages was two, that means some ages are close to the middle and some are further away, but on average, they tend to be about two away. So most of them are gonna be between two above and two below the mean. That's a rough sense of it. There are more specific things that you would learn if you took a full course in statistics or uh, if you went on to do other things, but that's a, a basic understanding that we can get so far. There's a little discussion here on how to calculate it by hand. We're generally not going to do that. There's going to be one example that I'll show you with the formula, but most of the time we'll just let the calculator handle it, handle it for us. So this initial part you can kind of read through without studying it very carefully. Uh, it's just a good idea to kind of see how it works once but you don't need to use this formula um, to calculate on the homework or on a test. You'll use your calculator, uh, as we'll see in a minute. But here's one example that you can walk through if you really want to see how to do this manually. Again, don't do this for the homework or the test, because um, you'll find that it takes far too long to do, and it's just tedious. So now we get to actually using your calculator for it. Uh, all of these you can find with your calculator, with the exception of the mode um, and the weighted mean is, is a little harder to get with the calculator, so we won't, that one you'll need to do uh, more or less by hand. But the mean, the median, and then the standard deviation you can see from your calculator, and the range you'll be able to get as well. So you should read through this carefully. Uh, basically, if you use the stat menu on your TI-83 or 84 uh, calculator, you can go through and find these statistics. So if you follow the instructions here, uh, you'll find these this list of statistics for one variable and notice the top one there is the mean x bar there are a couple that we don't use and then there are two standard deviations listed one is for the sample that's the s and the other one is for the population notice that they're similar but they're a little different and the uh, discussion on that is contained earlier when we go over the standard deviation you can read that if you really care about the details but probably you don't care much about the details um, we can use the sample one unless there's a good reason to use the population one. And then if you go down, notice that there's the minimum and the maximum. So if you want to find the range, you would just subtract those two numbers and find your um, range. And then the median is listed there as well. There's also a quick discussion here on how to use the frequency table to do the same thing. If you're given a frequency table and you want to calculate mean or median, or if you want to do a weighted average, uh, you can use that description there. And then there's a quick section on how to use Excel for the same kind of things. That's uh, more or less optional, but you can look over that if you're interested. Then the last thing in the section is what we call the five number summary and a box plot that goes with it. So if you go down to the bottom of one of our stats, there are these five numbers listed, and these five numbers are the five number summary. The median is one of them, the minimum and the maximum are the other two. And what the median does is it splits the data in half, and then we add two more points called Q1 and Q3, which split it in half again. So half of your data values are going to be between the minimum and Q1. So or, sorry, a quarter of them are going to be between 1.4 and 5.8, and then a quarter of them are going to be between 5.8 and 9, and so on. So this these five numbers split your data into four quarters. So a quarter of your data is in each section. And if you know how to read this, it can tell you something about how the data is spread out and where it's a little more clustered together. So you can read through this carefully and, and list the five number summary if you need to. And then with that, you can draw a visual that represents that five number summary. And it's called a box plot. So here we've got this box plot drawn. Basically, you've got your scale. And then along the scale, you mark those five numbers, so the minimum Q1, the median, Q3, and the maximum. 
then there's this convention where we connect these middle three with a box, and then we have these <clears throat> whiskers that go out to the endpoints, to the min and max. And basically, if you know what you're looking at, you can tell that the data is pretty clustered here between 5.8 and 9, and then it's more spread out on the upper end. So there's a good, some good information you can draw from this if you know how to read it. So you can draw this in your calculator as well, in that uh, just a visual display of the five number summary. So we won't do too much with that, but you'll see examples of that again on the homework and so on. So there's a lot in this section, uh, but you have a fair amount of time to cover this and focus on it. So make sure you go through each of those statistics and you can know how to calculate them and how to interpret them.